A whole f hour of work and my microphone hasn't been recording. Map Doctor! Map Doctor. In today's episode of Map Doctor, we'll be taking this map submitted by GP Studios and turning it into... Yeah, I'm not going to show you the finished product just yet. As you would have been able to tell from the beginning of this video, I recorded half of this. And then I realised my audio wasn't recording. So the first half of this video is going to be a voiceover, the rest of it more tutorial-like. Uh, enough of that, let's just jump right in. As you can see, this map started out with no walls, so that's one of the first things I did was in the engine, I added in some walls, got rid of all the furniture, and played around with different tile types. After I got the map looking how I wanted it to in the engine, that's when I took it into Photoshop. The first thing I wanted to do in Photoshop was because the bedroom was three tiles wide, I wanted to centralize that two tile wide window, which you can't do in the engine. So I simply just grabbed that asset, copied and pasted it over into the bedroom, and then centered it up in the room. For those of you who have watched my videos before, you know how I absolutely hate that the beds in RPG Maker don't sit flush with the wall. So that's one of the things I did for the beds in this level is I grabbed the assets, chucked them over into the Photoshop map, and made the beds flush with the wall so it actually looks like the beds are against the wall, not like two meters away from it. Another thing I don't like is that when you're carpeting a broom, the bottom carpet will like it'll be flush with the top of the wall. It doesn't look like there's anything behind that roof tile. So that's why what I did was grab the carpet tile, manipulated it a bit to make it look like the edge of the carpet was running behind the wall, not in front of that sort of roof tile, if that makes sense. I grabbed this chest of drawers and manipulated the sprite to turn it into a bedside table. I actually went through the process of talking about how I did this and why I was making the decisions I was making, but of course because the audio was cut, that's all gone. All that's left to do now is fill out the rest of the bedroom with clutter. That's things like this cute little fucking doggy picture that I found in the sci-fi tile set, as well as things like bookshelves, notes on the wall, some treasure chests in the corner, that sort of stuff. Just making it look lived in. Then it was time to move on to the storage room of the house. I grabbed one of the shelves and manipulated it, one of these like case shelves, and made our own shelf, our own storage shelf where we'd be able to store things on. I went through the entire process of telling you exactly what I was doing, why I was making the decisions I was making, where I was placing the shading and why, and I'm not gonna do that again. Not for this video anyway, but uh, that's all gone. Thanks for audio not recording. But you can see in the video behind this voice that's playing at the moment, just exactly what was made. After that, it was really just about filling the rest of the room in with clutter. So as you can see, I placed two barrels on top of each other. I then decided to add some boxes and pots and sacks and that sort of thing. I wanted to keep just below the window relatively empty because I figured it'd be a good place to store something like a treasure chest. The player would be able to come into this house and find whether it's his house or another NPC's house. And then I grabbed the floor and just started scuffing marks all over it because it's a storage room. I figure, you know, it's probably got a lot of mess in it and like the floors aren't that clean. I grabbed the kitchen benches and copied them in, making sure they were flush with the wall and adding a pixel that was dark to add shade to the side of the benches. I noticed that they were using this sort of fireplace as an oven, so I also used that, placed that on top of the bench, manipulated it a little, gave it a bit of a shadow so it was sticking out, uh, and then I just finished off the rest of the kitchen clutter, adding in a couple of shelves and stuff like that. I'd noticed in their original image they had this little table in the middle of the house which had a letter on it. So what I decided to do was grab the table that had flowers on top of it and then edit the sprite so that there was a letter sitting underneath the cloth that the plant was sitting on just to give that, you know, a bit more character and not just an empty table with a letter on it. And it was at that moment. A whole f hour of work and my microphone hasn't been recording. I didn't intend for this to be a commentary episode, so uh, we're over with the commentary and we're continuing on with the build. 
because my microphone decided, hey, you know what? I don't want to record half of your fucking video. All right, uh, where were we? We're in the kitchen. No, we just did this letter. All right, so what we're gonna do is jump over onto this wall over here. Firstly, I'll grab this grandfather clock above this little flower section here. Then I'm gonna put a shelf next to it. And over on this side, we're just gonna add a bookcase. Lastly, in the original map, this area looks a bit lived in with a cup of water and some tea. So I'm gonna add some of that stuff here now. I'm gonna use these picnic blanket looking things. I'm gonna copy them over into the map and place them as if they're cushions. And there we go. I'd say that's pretty good. This is what we started with. And this is what the house looks like now. Now, let's consolidate all these layers and move into the shadow stage. Oh, real quickly, one thing I did when my audio wasn't fucking recording was added these lanterns in. So I'm just gonna do a bit more of that around the house just to add some more light. Now I'm going to consolidate these layers and start adding the shadow layer. Shadow layer. One thing I'm doing when I'm using the layers is I'm either labeling them as NAP for nap or AP for app. That's not what they mean. I'm labeling them NAP, so when I go through and have to consolidate the layers that are going to appear above the player, I know that NAP means nothing in this layer is above the player. If I label it as AP, then I know the things in that layer are going to be above the player. Now that we've consolidated all of our layers into above player, or not above player, we're going to get to work on the shadow layer. I'm gonna get to work on the shadow realm. It's time to do, 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 do some shadows. Then on the shadow layer, the shadow realm. I'm just gonna cover it with darkness. Then I'm gonna go through and use my eraser tool and erase areas where light would be coming in. So first things first, I'm the realist. Secondly, light's gonna be streaming in through these windows. I'm gonna select this, then select an area where the light's gonna be streaming through. Now obviously, it's not going to be streaming down past the bed or anything like that. I'm going to remove areas that still will have a bit of shadow in it. One thing I'm really quickly going to do is just colour in this background black. Just so it's easier for us to see the shadows and the light and how it all affects everything. So there we go, this is looking good. Now the light on the sides here, which are just coming from the window, what we're gonna do with our eraser tool is just run along the edge of them because there's gonna be what's called specularity lighting or specular lighting. What that means is that areas are gonna be lit up because of the light around those areas. Then where this lantern is, we're going to also allow some light to be coming from. Same as with this bed, we're just going to allow for a bit of specular light off the edge here. Then what we're going to do is grab these window panes and lighten them because there's light streaming through them. an orange tint light to the room, or a yellow light to the room, coming from this light bulb. Let's move on to the main area. Firstly, anywhere there's gonna be a lantern like this. This door is gonna have light streaming in from it. And on our light layer, we're also gonna have white light streaming in through some windows. Add any necessary yellow light from the lanterns. Go, 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 go. 
Can I add some light coming in from the door? And then it's time to move on to the storage room. In the engine, I'm just going to add in the correct notes for the map to call the images. And just before I show you this map, if you would like your own map to be featured on a Map Doctor episode, then submit it to levelupdes at gmail.com with the subject line Map Doctor. And at the end of it, this is the map that we have. You can see by taking advantage of parallax mapping for lighting as well as adding extra clutter objects, we've turned a map from this into this. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave me a thumbs up, a like, catch.